Hello and welcome to Mindful Biology. This is the second of five sessions about fidelity. By fidelity, I mean our faith in our body's supportiveness, attunement to our needs, and efforts to do its best. In other words, I mean developing faith in our body and also an understanding that our bodies remain faithful to us. In the first session, I introduced the ICANN acronym, which stands for interest, compassion, appreciation, and nurture. It's my belief that these four qualities improve the friendliness and supportiveness of any relationship, including that between the so-called mind and the so-called body. In the last session, I discussed briefly how in our culture we tend to separate mind and body and that they tend to feel rather alienated from each other. In many spiritual practices that emphasize mind-body connection, we ultimately come to understand that there isn't a true difference or separation between the two. But that's not where we begin. And so as long as we feel separated from our bodies and even somewhat alienated from them, it makes sense to work on the relationship between the two in order to cultivate more qualities of affection, tenderness, supportiveness, etc. And this is the point of the ICANN acronym. So today, in the second of the five Fidelity sessions, we'll be focusing on the quality of interest. Throughout the whole series, we'll be using the respiratory system to explore the ICANN acronym, and today we'll use the upper region of the respiratory system, namely the nasal passages and the airways that extend down toward the upper chest. As we delve a little more deeply into you know, this idea of being interested in the body and the sensations of the body, a you know, very detailed, curious investigation. So when we look at a human face, we see, of course, a nose in the front of it. And we're familiar that noses have a certain, certain appearance. They come in different sizes, shapes, colors, complexions, etc. We're a lot less familiar, I believe, with what's going on behind the surface appearance. Okay, so back behind the skin and cartilage of the nose and the, the nasal bones, there are airways that extend from the nostrils to the oral cavity and the throat. These have an irregular appearance, more or less as shown in blue. There are two passageways, left and right, separated by the uh, nasal septum. So this is, in a schematic sense, what is going on behind the skin, cartilage, and bone of the nose. I want to divide the face just to the right, for you know, to the to the subject's right of the septum. Okay, so we're going to look at the right nasal passageway by basically opening it out to the side like this. Okay. So now we're looking at the right nasal passageway from basically from the middle of the head looking toward the side of the head. So this is the side wall of that right passageway. And we can see the folds that give the irregular appearance that we noted. Okay. So these folds in the lateral wall of the nose serve a very important purpose, which is they make the air kind of squeeze and turn and twist in a way that puts it into a very intimate contact with the nasal passageways surface, the nasal mucosa. So as the air flows from the nostrils back to the oral cavity and the throat, it's channeled in these tight little spaces and gets plenty of contact with the nasal membrane. That membrane is quite moist, so the air gets humidified as a consequence. It's also sticky, and that traps things like pollen and other uh, particulate debris, so the air gets cleansed. 
And then there's a very profuse blood supply, so the air also gets warmed as it passes through these nasal passageways. I want to explore that mucosal membrane just a little bit further so we're you know, clear about what it's doing because it's pretty remarkable. So this is you know, one of these things that we can be interested in, you know, what's really going on on a microscopic level. So we're looking here at some nasal mucosal cells, and this is at ex extremely high magnification, you know, beyond what you could really achieve even with a light microscope. And we can see that there are these projections, these little finger-like strands coming off the cells. These are called cilia, and they're in active motion. They, they move uh, under their own motive power. So there's also this gland, which is secreting that sticky layer, the mucus layer that we can see now. Okay, so the, the cilia are kind of beating in, you know, sort of moving in this sticky layer that's secreted by the nasal mucosal glands. The movement of those little cilia serves to kind of propel the mucus blanket back toward the throat so that all the debris and stuff that gets stuck in it can be swallowed and it doesn't end up in the lungs, okay? And it shows how these little hair-like things can move the debris uh, quite efficiently, cleaning the air that enters the nose. Underneath the mucous membrane, there is a very profuse blood supply as shown here. And this is you know, what provides the warmth. It also brings in immune cells so that the nasal mucosa can fight off uh, anything that might infect it, or at least most things. Okay, so that's a brief summary of what the nasal passageways are doing to condition the air that we inhale. You know, by humidifying, cleansing, and warming it, it prepares the incoming air for the very delicate lung tissue that it eventually uh, reaches. Because the nasal passages do all this, the flavor, so to speak, of the incoming air differs from that of the outgoing air. So it tends to feel a little cooler and fresher when air is coming into the nose and a little bit warmer and softer as the air goes out. And that difference between fresh on the one hand and soft on the other has a lot to do with the humidity. It may also have to do with you know, some diminishment of particulate debris. And so there is a real qualitative difference between the air that we're breathing fresh from the atmosphere and the air that exits our bodies, you know, laden with water on its way out. We can feel this transition from the cool, fresh, inhaled air to the warm, soft, exhaled air in meditation. And that actually can be a fine practice to incorporate in either a sitting meditation or even just while you're walking around, you can tune in to the subtle changes in the qualities of the incoming and outgoing air. Let's now explore the nasal passageways a little further. To do so, we'll divide the face in a different way, going through it in this vertical plane and turning the back of the head to face us so that we're now looking at a CT scan section just behind the midpoint of the eyeballs. And so we can see the eye sockets left and right with a little bit of the eyeball in view uh, very subtly. Below the eye sockets are large open spaces. Uh, those are sinuses. And then the triangular region below and between the eyes represents the two nasal passageways. You'll notice that the one on the patient's left is more open than the one on the right in this scan. And that's because the mucosal membrane on the right side is more engorged than on the left at this point in time. The relative engorgements of the left and right nasal passageway mucosa tends to fluctuate throughout the course of a day. And so we will often find that air flows more freely on one side than the other, but that changes in an alternating fashion, sort of hour by hour. 
Let's now look at something that's a little less diagrammatic and more realistic, taking a view with a video nasal scope such as might be used uh, by a head and neck physician. So we move into the nostrils and we see the sticky, wet interior and we see all those folds that we were looking at previously. And so it's pretty clear that the air will have to flow around and through these tight passageways. And as it does so, it will be humidified and cleansed and warmed. So that gives us yet another sense as to what's going on inside our nasal passageways. To go a little further, we can look at this three-dimensional reconstruction of the interior of the nasal space. This shows the nose, if you were to fill it with a plastic resin and then take that mold out, this is what the interior of the nasal passageways left and right would look like with a separation down the middle representing the septum. So there's this irregular interior through which the air flows. And it tends to divide some of it flowing up along the roof of that nasal passageway and some of it flowing along the floor. We can look from another direction and divide the face something like this and tilt the upper part upward. And then we see the nasal passageways looking up at them from below, as it were. So the nostrils are at the top of the field here. And when we breathe in, the air moves from the nostrils back toward the throat. We're just looking at the inhalation phase here. Of course, there would be a corresponding exhalation phase. So the interior of the nostrils have this irregular shape. The relative sizes of the left and right nasal passages changes over time and the air tends to flow along this complicated path, but particularly high in the nasal uh, opening and down along its floor. Way up high in this region, there's a special type of nasal mucosa which has the olfactory receptors in it, and so this is the region that we use when we smell. And so as we practice a mindfulness of breath meditation, we can actually kind of sniff as if trying to capture the scent of flowers and feel the airflow rise to the roof of the nasal passageway. We can also feel the flow along the floor of the nasal passageway. In other words, we can track the interior experience of the nasal airways. Now the feeling of the interior will not probably match in, in any detailed way the anatomical structure that we see here. It's actually going to feel larger and vaguer than all of this. But it's nice to have a sense of what the physical structure looks like and then compare it with what the experiential activity of breathing feels like. And that can be another meditation practice to add to your repertoire, feeling the interior shape as you experience it directly as you breathe, understanding the structural anatomy, but remaining faithful to your own experience. And then finally, we'll move on and look at the nasal passageways from yet another perspective, which is to enlarge our field and take in their connections to the mouth and throat. So as the air flows in through the nasal passageways, it eventually gets back to where the nasal openings connect with the oral opening, and then eventually those two funnel down the throat. So the air flows in down to the upper chest, and then it flows out in a reverse path. So looking here a little more anatomically, we can see the tongue, both the visible part that we're familiar with, and then the posterior, or the part in the back, that forms the front wall of the upper throat. 
There's the palate, which we know as the roof of the mouth, but it's also the floor of the nasal passageway. So air flows in, flows above the palate to an opening uh, at the back, and then it travels down behind the tongue and into the trachea or windpipe. As it enters the trachea or windpipe, it encounters this special region here, which is the larynx, where the vocal folds are. This is important when we exhale and speak at the same time, because the vocal folds cause fluctuations in the airflow that we know as the sounds of speech. So the larynx is sometimes easy to see as the Adam's apple, generally more prominent in males than females. On the inside, there are these vocal folds, sometimes called vocal cords. We're looking at them in a stroboscopic photograph here, so they're shown much slower than the actual rate of vibration in life. But as a person hums, as in this picture, we can see this regular movement of the vocal folds, and this is what generates sound, just like a musical instrument vibrates to generate sound. So we're becoming more and more familiar with what's going on in our upper airways. And we understand that the air flows down through the nasal passageways, behind the tongue, over the vocal folds, and then it continues down into the trachea or windpipe, and eventually down into the upper chest, where it divides into two paths to enter the two lungs. We can look here in this animation to get a brief sense of how the air flows through the nasal passageways, down the throat, into the trachea, and thence uh, into the two lungs. So hopefully all of this imagery helps you understand and perhaps feel some respect and admiration for the intricacy of the process of breathing, the supportiveness of your body as it performs this vital function that keeps us alive. We can add to our meditation repertoire by further exploring the sensations of breath as they move from the nasal passageways all the way down into the upper chest and back out again. And we can feel a very subtle shift in temperature and texture as described earlier, but follow it all the way down and back again from the chest and throat. So this concludes the second of five talks about fidelity. The next session will move us from interest to compassion. But perhaps you can spend a few days bringing more loving attention and interest to bear on this amazing process of the movement of breath through the nasal passageways, down the throat and into the chest, and then back out again. Thank you for watching.